This isn't just a trade war anymore. This is a full-blown tech crisis, and it's getting worse. The US just launched phase two of the global chip war, and it's losing control fast. What started as a move to block China's AI progress is now hurting the entire world. And here's the twist. America's own tech giants are the ones sounding the alarm. A few days ago, top CEOs from Microsoft, Nvidia, and Google went to Washington, not to support the government, but to warn it. They said the new chip bans are backfiring. Instead of slowing China, the US is cornering its own tech giants, locking them out of the markets that matter most. Billions of dollars in sales are now blocked, not just to China, but to countries across Asia, Africa, and Latin America. And those are the places where future tech adoption will happen. And while Washington is playing defense, China is fighting smarter. They're building their own chips, signing deals with new partners, and pulling in the rest of the world. Microsoft put it simply, only 4% of the world's population lives in the US. If the rest of the world adopts China's tech standards, America loses the race. And now, Washington is about to make things even worse, because the opening shots have already been fired. So ensure you are subscribed, and let's talk about what's coming next. The battle over computer chips has intensified into a worldwide showdown, one where national security, economic dominance, and technological leadership are all on the line. As of May 2025, the US has expanded its restrictions on chip exports. These rules don't just affect China, but also any company or country helping China's chip industry. The reason? The US wants to stop China from gaining the hardware needed for advanced artificial intelligence, quantum computing, and future military technology. But not everyone in the US agrees. In early May, top leaders from companies like Nvidia, Intel, Microsoft, and AMD spoke to Congress. They warned that these strict rules are hurting the American chip industry. By stopping chip sales, especially to countries outside China, the US is losing money and influence. Microsoft put it clearly, 78% of the world's population lives outside the US and China. Ignoring these markets opens the door for Chinese tech to grow instead. What happens when security goals clash with the need to make money in a connected world? In 2023, Huawei shocked the world with the launch of its Mate 60 Pro smartphone, powered by a 7 nanometer chip made by SMIC, China's top chip maker. Experts said this kind of chip couldn't be built without US or Dutch equipment. And yet, there it was, made in China, running on Chinese hardware. That wasn't just a smartphone launch. It was proof that China could now make advanced chips on its own. And those chips aren't just going into phones. They're powering AI clusters, quantum computers, and military-grade systems that don't rely on Silicon Valley anymore. And this is where things get serious. In the city of Hefei, a company called Origin Quantum has been quietly building something remarkable. In 2024, they revealed Wukong, a 72-qubit quantum processor that's now running inside China's own quantum cloud platform, Origin Q. It's already being used to test algorithms for breaking encryption and solving problems traditional computers can't touch. That's not theory. It's hardware, up and running. Then there's Baidu, best known for search engines, but now one of China's top quantum players. Their platform, Qian Shi, offers direct access to quantum machines over the cloud. And at the same time, researchers from the University of Science and Technology of China have built a quantum processor called Zhu Changzhi 2.1, which reportedly performed a specific task one million times faster than Google's Sycamore. If those claims hold up, China may not just be catching up, they might already be pulling ahead. And while China builds quantum power, it's making huge moves in artificial intelligence too. Again, using chips the West tried to block. In 2024, iFlyTech, a Chinese AI firm, launched a large language model called SparkDesk, trained fully on Chinese-made processors. SparkDesk has already been rolled out in schools, state offices, and law enforcement systems. Some internal tests even suggest it outperforms ChatGPT and Mandarin tasks, which matters in a country of 1.4 billion Mandarin speakers. 
Meanwhile, Huawei continues its AI push with the Ascend 91B chip, a high-performance processor built completely without US tools. That chip powers Huawei's Pangu 3.0, a massive AI model trained not just to chat, but to help in military planning, urban surveillance, and policymaking. And here's the key. All of this is now being done without foreign tech. No NVIDIA chips, no Google software, no reliance on TSMC or ASML. For the first time, China isn't just playing catch-up. It's writing its own rules in tech. So what does that mean for the rest of us? It means the old belief that sanctions could slow China down is already outdated. Despite being cut off from the West's most advanced tools, China is building its own digital future, and it's doing so quickly. Their AI is getting smarter, their quantum computers are getting stronger, and they no longer need to wait for Silicon Valley's permission to move forward. So what is the US doing about it? This is where the recent moves of the White House come in. President Trump has taken a bold step by turning chip exports into a diplomatic tool. A few days ago, Trump and his team made deals with Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. These deals weren't just about oil or weapons, but also about technology. As part of the deal, NVIDIA will send hundreds of thousands of AI chips to Saudi Arabia's new government-backed AI company. AMD signed a $10 billion contract to provide chips, software, and support across the Gulf. At the same time, American companies will build massive data centers there. These moves tie the Middle East's digital future to U.S. technology. These agreements help U.S. companies make up for lost business in China and also counter China's growing influence through its Belt and Road digital projects. By linking these Gulf nations to American tech, the U.S. ensures that their AI systems follow American rules and use American products. But just when America seemed to be adjusting its strategy, it may have gone too far. In a major step, the U.S. Commerce Department said that even Huawei chips made entirely in China are now restricted. Why? The U.S. claims these chips still include American technology somewhere in the process. This rule applies everywhere. Any company using these Huawei chips might now be breaking U.S. law. This is a big deal. It's like the financial sanctions the U.S. used on Iran and Russia. But now the focus is on computer chips, the brainpower behind the digital economy. Telecom companies in Africa, Asia, and the Middle East now have a tough choice. Stop using Huawei or lose access to U.S. tech and banking. The goal is to block China's rise in AI. But this move could push away friendly countries, too. European leaders are already uneasy. India's tech companies want exceptions. Even Israel, a close U.S. ally, is asking if it has to shut down its Huawei-based research centers. So far, China hasn't responded with loud threats. Instead, it's moving smartly and quietly. Chinese chips like the Ascend 910B and 920 are now being sent to Africa and Latin America with big discounts and government support. Through programs like the Digital Silk Road, China is offering entire AI systems, chips, software, cloud storage, and training for little or no cost. At the same time, China is promoting its own rules for chip design and offering free AI education and tools in countries like Brazil, Nigeria, Indonesia, and Egypt. The idea is to break up the global market and build friendly tech zones around Chinese products. This strategy, known as the Blue Ocean Plan, avoids direct fights with the US and creates new markets where China can lead. And this is happening fast. As of mid-2025, nearly 40 developing countries have signed up for China's Global AI Harmony Initiative, led by its Ministry of Industry and Information Technology. It seems that while Washington isolates, Beijing connects and expands. What this has led to is that the US and China are now pulling the world into two separate tech worlds. One world is led by the US using export bans, strict rules, and legal protections. The other is led by China using subsidies, open platforms, and tech partnerships. This split has serious effects. For companies, Following rules from both sides gets very expensive. For countries, choosing technology becomes a political choice. For tech workers and developers, the tools and knowledge they use may soon be limited by where they live. 
The World Trade Organization is now dealing with many complaints about U.S. policies. Some G20 countries want a special group to review America's actions. At the United Nations, both China and the U.S. are lobbying hard over who should set the rules for AI and the Internet. This tug of war over global tech governance is just the surface. Beneath it, deeper fractures are forming, fractures that could reshape the entire digital landscape. The U.S. may think it's winning by stopping China from getting high-end chips, but it might actually be creating bigger problems. The world's supply chains are breaking, trust in American technology is fading, and China is rising, offering an alternative path to tech power that many countries are now taking. Even in the U.S., there is disagreement. Chip companies want to sell globally. Defense experts want tight controls. AI researchers want global teamwork. Politicians want to win elections. The result is a policy that feels confused and messy. China is capitalizing on the chaos, quietly building an ecosystem that rivals Silicon Valley's reach. If America can't balance fear with foresight, it risks losing more than a war. It risks becoming irrelevant in the very world it once built. Even in India, the response was also negative. The U.S. placed India in its second tier for AI chip access, meaning Indian companies will face licensing requirements and supply limits. While this might not affect India's short-term goals, experts say the uncertainty around getting approvals could make it harder for India to scale up its AI systems. Leaders in India's tech sector are frustrated. They believe this approach makes it harder for India to become a global AI hub. Some Indian strategists even warn that if the U.S. continues this pressure, it might push India to work more closely with countries like China or Russia. Brazil took an even stronger stance. In 2024, Brazilian President Lula met with Chinese President Xi Jinping and signed 37 deals, including agreements that will enhance tech development. He even told reporters that Brazil is not afraid of the big bad wolf, clearly referring to U.S. pressure. Brazil is now offering large incentives to build its own domestic chip industry, and it's working closely with China to achieve this. South Africa also voiced its support for an alternative global tech system. At the 2023 BRICS Summit, South African leaders called for inclusive multilateralism, which is a way of saying they want international cooperation that doesn't revolve around the U.S. and the West. South Africa joined China and Russia in supporting the idea of a BRICS-based AI alliance. Even though South Africa didn't directly criticize the U.S. export bans, its actions show it prefers a new tech order that's not led by Washington. Even countries that were not heavily restricted by the U.S., such as Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, and Australia, are quietly worried. They see the U.S. trying to act like a global tech enforcer, and they fear this might go too far. Malaysia's trade minister warned that if the U.S. continues to block BRICS countries or raise tariffs on their tech goods, it could hurt both sides and create massive disruption in the global chip supply chain. Experts are starting to say that this with us or against us approach from Washington might push even friendly countries to distance themselves and seek out deals with China or other non-Western powers. There are also major risks for the U.S. itself. Although Washington is trying to control who gets access to advanced chips, it no longer produces most of the world's semiconductors. Today, Taiwan's TSMC makes about 70% of all chips globally, and South Korea's Samsung and SK Hynix also hold large shares. The U.S., on the other hand, only makes about 10 to 12% of the world's chips. So, even if the U.S. limits exports, China can still get chips through third parties, or make them at home. This strategy could easily backfire. One think tank warned that if the U.S. keeps pushing allies and rivals alike into a corner, it may find itself isolated, just as it has in the global shift away from the dollar. If China succeeds in building a self-reliant chip industry, Washington won't just lose leverage. It could be locked out of the fastest growing tech markets on the planet. So whose rules will define the future of technology and who will be left behind? Stay tuned to see how the story will unfold. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss what happens next.